I want to open in prayer, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. God, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for giving us life, for redeeming us. Thank you for sending Jesus on the cross. We thank you for this food and for all the things that you do in our lives. I thank you for this semester and how you're going to be teaching us, how you're going to be guiding us, and how we're going to be transformed to be more like you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, it's so great to see all of you today because, as you know, today is the first day of college football season, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, and J.D. Payne's here. Um, welcome to the first Global Voices of the year. And, oh, where is Gabby? Is Gabby here? She's out there. Okay, well, I wanted to welcome Gabby, too, because my new assistant is – yeah, go ahead, bring her in, and – I'll give her a shout out uh, because she did arrange this. <clears throat> In the meantime, Dr. Payne taught for over 10 years at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky, where he was actually on my oral defense committee, unwisely signing off on my dissertation and unleashing me into the world of academia. He taught church planning and missions and oversaw the Center for North American Missions and Church Planting. Most recently, he served for about five years at the Church of Brook Hills as the pastor of church multiplication, and he's also taught as an adjunct of Beeson Divinity School. He's written 13 books, and I absolutely refuse to read the names of them all. They're on Amazon. You can get them. They're very good. Uh, his wife, Sarah, is a physician at Christ Health Center in Birmingham. They have three children, Hannah, Rachel, and Joel. I'm super excited to welcome J.D. Payne as the Associate Professor of Christian Ministries in the brand new Christian Ministry Program. And while we're talking about that, I want to also recognize um, Kevin Blackwell, who works in the Christian Ministry Program, Dean Joe Hopkins, who is uh, overseeing the program, um, and the Executive Director. Where's Scott? Is Scott here? He's teaching. Oh, he's teaching. What a slacker. All right. Uh, but he's the executive director of Christian Ministry Program. I'm super excited to see what God's going to do through this. Um, and Gabby, thank you, Gabby, for arranging the event. And welcome you to Beeson Divinity School, Sanford University. All right. Uh, you can follow JD on social media, his blog, jdpain.org. You, you can listen to his podcast, Strike the Match. Please welcome today, JD Payne. <laughs> If I had known what Dr. Parks would have become of himself, I probably would have withheld the, the signature for you students that have taken him and been subjected to uh, his missiological torture in the, uh, in the, in the academic setting. But, uh, you know, you, 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 can't for, you can't foresee those things, you know, that come down, down the road no matter how hard he, you know, he fakes out his professor. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I have thought very highly of Dr. David for for many years, and when I found out that he was coming here to uh, direct the Global Center, uh, I was elated, and then the Lord ended up calling me to Birmingham uh, after being uh, in Louisville, Kentucky for the decade, and it was probably about a year after I got here that we just reconnected, and so I guess that was probably five, I've been here six years, but I guess it was maybe five years ago or so, and it's just been really good to just to catch up and get to know uh, a, a brother afresh and a new uh, once again. And so um, when he invited me to, to come and, and, and share at Global Voices today, I uh, was very excited. I'm very honored to, to be here. And I, I asked him, I said, so what do you want me, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, um, well, can you, can you share something on, on, on missions, but at the same time, can you also... Uh, maybe talk about the new Christian ministry program that you're a part of, and it's just launched this fall uh, here at, at Samford. And I said, sure. And then it was, uh, I don't know, a short time after that, he said, we, well, we need a title for, for what you're going to say. And so I, uh, I, I came up with this, the student, the university, and the mission of God. Now, I have to admit, I, I'm one of these people that can come up with really cool-sounding titles, but my content is what lacks. So, I mean, some of you read that and you thought, man, that sounds like an Evangelical Theological Society paper. I need to go check this guy out. I mean, man, anybody's got a title like that, the student, the university, and the mission of God. Uh, but I, you know, 
I, I'm here to have more of a, of a relaxed conversation with you if I can. Yes, on that topic. Uh, and if we have some time, which I'm hoping that we will, to maybe even do some, some Q&A uh, as well. So that would be, that'd be great. David asked me if, if I could work that in if possible. And so, so we'll, we'll do that. Um, let, me, uh, let, me, let me share a verse of Scripture with you that I was reading through in my quiet time uh, last week uh, as I was, had been going through the book of 1 Corinthians. And I came to the end of the chapter. And in uh, chapter 16... Um, we see Paul, as he normally does with his concluding thoughts coming to the end of many of his, his epistles, he, 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 he kind of gives some of these side comments at times, but, it, but it, it, they're really insightful to what the Holy Spirit was doing at that point in time in history uh, in the advancement of the gospel as disciples are being multiplied and churches are being multiplied all across uh, the world at that point in time. And he just makes this very simple statement about uh, staying on at Ephesus until Pentecost. And then in verse 9, uh, he says, For a wide door... For effective work has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. And I just, during my, my time with the Lord, just meditating on this passage, that a wide door for effective work uh, was the phrase that I came across uh, about the, the first day that I started here, officially on, on the 20th. And I'm, I'm not saying that the whole development of this, this Christian ministries program is is a, a wide door that, that doesn't exist or never existed with Samford University. But, but what I'm saying is, is I, I really do believe that the Lord ha, has given us another variation on the wide door that He has opened for us as, as a university. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different variation than where we've been in the past. And when I say we, I'm now considering myself a part of, uh, of the tribe, even though I'm, I am uh, very much an, uh, a newcomer here. But the, but the notion of of a, a sort of a new paradigm, a new way of thinking, of building on what's continuing on, um, was something that was just coming across my mind in, in this process as uh, we've been starting in the, in the fall semester. Um, you know, I, I want to greatly commend um, and, and very thankful uh, to Dr. Uh, to President Westmoreland and Provost Mike Harden on their vision for this new program and moving things forward. However, there, there have been several other people that have contributed to the beginning of this new Christian ministry program that just, just launched. And I could go through a big list, list of names. Kevin Blackwell was, was a part of that with Ministry Training Institute, and now connecting with, um, with the uh, uh, Christian ministry program. Uh, but much of what I'm going to share today about what's going on uh, it is really the, the, the heavy lifting of, of, of two men, uh, Dr. Scott Guffin, the executive director of the program, and uh, Dr. Joe Hopkins, who's the dean of the School of the Arts. The, those two brothers have, have done an enormous amount of work, uh, are incredibly zealous about what's taking place, and provided incredible leadership and guidance and, and, and direction uh, to get us to where we are today, launching this here in, in the fall. Uh, and so um, I want to I share this quote with you that I, I heard R.C. Sproul say when he was speaking on what is a Christian college. Uh, he made this statement. He said, a Christian college or university is one that is committed to the premise uh, that the ultimate truth is the truth of God, and He is the foundation and source of all other truth. And everything else we learn, whether it is economics, philosophy, biology, or mathematics, has to be understood in light of the overarching reality of the character of God. Um, now, I agree with Sproul on this, but... but at, at, at the risk of, of me saying that I want to add something to it, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to add to Dr. Scroll, or Sproul, excuse me. Um, I would add one thing to his words here, and I would say all the fields of study that we pursue, yes, they have to be understood in light of the overarching reality of the character of God, and, here's my addition, and his mission in the world today. And the reason that I would add that statement, uh, that latter phrase, is that, that somehow... In, in the study of the character of God, we, at least here in the States, I believe, have a nasty habit of omitting His apostolic nature. And so, you know, conversations about the nature of God, the, the missio Dei particularly, the mission of God, uh, really began to, to pick up uh, a little bit of attention when, uh, when uh, Karl Barth popularized the, the, the discussion in the 1930s. And then fast forward, I won't go into all the history, history there, um, but fast forward to the turn of the, the, the 21st century, uh, you really begin to see a lot of people having this conversation about 
about the mission of God. And, and while we, we read these massive volumes that have been written in the past few years on, on the mission of God, God's mission, things of that nature, uh, we, we, we still, I find uh, many times, end up talking about the nature of God and, and still leaving out that apostolic aspect of His character and even more so the, the practical outplay, the, the practical implications for the church as, as she is joining God on His mission in the world today. And so um, where do we find ourselves? Well, we find ourselves in, in 2018 uh, on a planet with, with 5 billion people that, that have no relationship with Christ. Uh, we know of 2 billion, uh, give or take one or two, we know of 2 billion that have never even heard of the name of Jesus. Uh, and out of all those numbers, we, we, we break things down and we, we find out that there are over 7,000 people groups that are considered unreached people groups. And out of those, we see that there are over 3,000 unengaged unreached people groups, meaning that intentional evangelical church planting strategy is not engaging any of them. And we get a little bit closer to home to like even in the United States, and we find out that the United States is home to 280 unreached people groups. And that makes the United States the third largest country in the world for unreached people groups behind India being number one and China being number two. We're number three. And Canada's number six. So, so, so nor the two, co two countries in the North American landscape uh, come in at, at third and sixth place for the largest number of unreached people groups in the world. And, and yet we have a lot of conversations about God's character. Maybe we have some conversations about the apostolic nature of His character. But then what's that doing, practically speaking, on the field? And how, how is that playing out? So as I uh, was in the process of talking to Drs. Hopkins and uh, uh, Dr. Guffin, I was delighted to find out uh, that these two brothers shared a very strong desire uh, reflected in, in the desire to have a, a, an undergraduate program of study that was both theologically grounded in biblical truth and at the same time highly practical and with a great deal of emphasis on disciple making and missions. Uh, it was very encouraging, very exciting to, to hear that. In addition to, to that excitement that, that I uh, heard from these two brothers as we had conversations, there, there, were, there were two other things that came about uh, that really excite me about being here at Sanford and being a part of, of this new endeavor. Uh, the first one is the opportunity to, to help uh, be a part of building uh, a Christian ministry program, Christian ministry major, uh, from almost from scratch. Uh, I, I just am really excited about that, that pioneering aspect and things of that nature. And uh, last week uh, we had uh, six uh, students to declare their major in Christian ministry, kicking off the August uh, you know, the cl incoming class. And so that was quite, quite exciting. I'm, I've been going around telling everybody that, you know, with, within about a week or two period of time after this was announced, we had a 600% growth increase. And so... <laughs> You know, there's that pastor and church growth numbers coming out of me. I'm sorry, but, you know, it's true, but anyhow. But six, I mean, it's encouraging. So I, that, that, that excites me. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about us as a university being able to have a, a variation on an open door that the Lord has set before us uh, to be able to, to see the, these students and, and, Lord willing, others in days to come. But there's a second thing that excites me about what's going on, what the Spirit is doing among our family here at Sanford, uh, and that is there's the opportunity to, to be able to assist in preparing the Sanford community, not just Christian ministry majors, not just those in the Christian ministry program, but an opportunity uh, to assist in, in preparing, helping the Sanford community uh, for global disciple making, <laughs> regardless of, of what major uh, the student is involved in. Uh, and whether that student is, is serving in Birmingham, across North America, or throughout the world, to be able to, to have a small part to play in, in helping others see a vision of, of, of God's great nature, its kingdom expansion, and their role in being able to take their marketable skills and their marketable degrees and be able to go into the marketplace, whether it's here, whether it's across North America, throughout the world, in the areas of, of, of greatest needs for lostness, greatest needs for spiritual needs as well, and, and be able to see the advancement of the kingdom of God. And, and I realize that, that, that that slice of the pie, so to speak, is, is, a, is a much larger slice of the pie than, than those that will in all likelihood be Christian ministry majors. And, and that's, that's sort of the case with the body of Christ, right? I mean, I know I'm speaking to many Beeson students here. And I know when you're always around seminary students and you're talking to pastors all the time and missionaries all the time and other church leaders all the time, you, you begin to think, 
everybody's a pastor. You know, it's, it's like everybody's a missionary. Everybody, everybody is, a, is an elder. And then you realize, wait a minute, I am a very, very small, small portion in, in the body of Christ. And so recognizing that we as a university have this incredible stewardship, and it's been there since the, the, the university's uh, origin, uh, the opportunity to be able to help shepherd students uh, to the field, wherever they're going, and, and, and to recognize that, that God has not just given them the opportunity to make a living and contribute to a better improvement in, in, the, in the civic world, though that those things are important, uh, but something even beyond that, to be able to be a part of going into all the world and making disciples of all nations and baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that Christ commanded. And even in the process of, of for example, church planting, uh, not only in disciple making, which all believers need to be a part of and be, be equipped in, but the whole notion of church planting, seeing churches birthed out of the harvest of unreached people groups, whether they're down the street across North America or throughout the world, it's only a small step away from disciple making. That's what we see throughout the New Testament. And while not everyone is obviously a church planter, just like not everyone's called to be a pastor, I believe that there are a lot of economists that will come out of here. There are a lot of teachers, a lot of educators, a lot of nurses, there are a lot of artists that will come out of this university, and they will be the next church planters. They will be the next folks that are out in the highways and hedges of lostness in Birmingham, across North America, throughout the world, and they won't look like the traditional route that I went, and maybe some of you are used to. Uh, in other words, they will find themselves uh, out in the world, uh, in the world of, of drama and dance. They will find themselves in the world of medicine and technology. They'll find themselves in the world of computer science. They'll find themselves as politicians. And yet, at the same time, in that journey and in that process of walking the halls, and walking the campus at Samford, the Lord was working through the Samford community to stir in their hearts something greater than me just being able to get a paycheck, you know, because now I'm a history teacher but something beyond that, and it'll look different. But yet it will be about the advancement of God's kingdom and his mission playing out as a result of what happened on the university campus while they were here. If you go back and you look in, in just U.S. history, for example, and even elements of European, Western European history, you find out that oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, uh, some of the great awakenings, some of the great revivals, some of the, the great missionary movements, if you will, uh, in church history occurred where? On the college on the university campuses. And, and could it happen again? Could, could Sanford be a part of that, of, uh, of seeing the Lord's Spirit move in such a way that, that women and men you know, go out from here, and again, whether they, they go across the street or across the continent or across the world, they're taking those tools that, that they've developed while they're here, and, and they're not just contributing to an office culture, an office environment, but they're really engaging and seeing disciples made in that office environment, in that culture, and in that world. Yes, will there be those that will, will go out and go the traditional route? Absolutely. And I'm excited about working with those. I'm excited about working with our, our majors and our, in our, our um, Christian ministry program. That, 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 that is, that's my passion. That's my background. That's, that's how I'm wired. I came through a very traditional route. 19 years of pastoral ministry, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, 10 years uh, uh, full-time teaching, uh, another seven or eight adjunct teaching, part-time teaching on top of that, but, but always in a very, very traditional kind of ministry approach and model, even when I was involved in church planning activities. Um, but, but the future, the future, what, what are the possibilities of seeing the, the mission of God uh, being carried out through, through what he does through his people at Sanford University? That's, that's an encouraging thing for me, I'm, and I'm praying for such a movement of his spirit, and I'm praying for our hearts, and I'm praying for our students. And, and to be able to know that there are men and women across this campus that I can lock arms with and partner with in that endeavor, that, that excites me. So let me share a little bit about the, the program, uh, since, since I was asked to, to, to comment some on it. Um, I'll share with you five distinctives of this program uh, that may be helpful for you to, to be able to get a better understanding of what is this Christian ministry program. Um, now, trust me, I'm not expecting you Beeson students to say, man, I just need to go back and do another undergrad degree. You know, not getting enough, you know, I've got too much time on my hands. I'm only taking, you know, all these Hebrew classes and Greek. I need to go back and get another undergrad. I'm not, I'm not expecting that. Um, but I want you to hear what, what the Lord is doing. And, and, I want, and I'm going to, and I'm going to share some things just at the end that I think will be some challenges to all of us, whether we're faculty, whether we're staff, whether the, we're, we're students here, whether we're at Beeson, whether uh, you know the undergraduate program, um, wherever we, we fall into this family at Sanford University. I want to share some things that I think will be some challenges for us to kind of take away. 
But five distinctives to the program. Uh, Dr. Guffin developed these. You can see these on, on the website. And so I'm just going to share them uh, with you from, from what's out there. Uh, so the first key distinctive of the Christian ministry program at Samford University is that it is biblically grounded, biblically grounded. Uh, the Christian ministry program reverently views the Bible as the inspired Word of God. As such, it is the true, trustworthy, authoritative, and sufficient guide for all that we believe and do, our first and best textbook. Key distinctive number two, theologically evangelical. The Christian ministry program is deeply grounded in an evangelical approach to theology. Thus, we stand on a commitment to a high view of Scripture, a belief that individuals come to salvation by God's grace through faith in Christ alone, a conviction that we are to spread the good news of Christ, and or, excuse me, spread the good news of Christ as we openly live out our faith, and a calling to go missionally into the world, making disciples of all nations. Key distinctive number three: missionally focused. The heart of the Christian ministry program centers on obedience to Jesus' great command and great commission. A focus on disciple making and missions is central to the program's curriculum. So a program that's very highly practically in its orientation, uh, one of the things that I heard Dr. Geffen say many times is the desire for disciple making to be a part of that. And so students are actually taking courses in, in disciple making uh, in the very early, in the very beginning of their, uh, their program of study. Uh, key distinctive uh, number three, Baptist Connected. Sanford was founded as a Baptist university, and the Christian ministry program has deep roots and connections with Baptists locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. With our strong emphasis on disciple-making and missions, we also maintain connections with evangelicals around the world and invite Christians of all denominations to join us for training and equipping. And then finally, uh, the last key distinctive, number five, it's a program that's academically rigorous, academically rigorous. We believe that anything of eternal value is worth doing with excellence. Therefore, we ask students to approach their education with their best effort, working, quote, as unto the Lord, end quote, Colossians 3.23. So if you, if you want to get an understanding of, of what is this new program is about, what is this, this new, new thing that's happening on Sanford's campus about, uh, that's really what it's about. Those five key distinctives really help unpack it, that, that there's a high degree of, of practical hands-on training, uh, and again, a, a lot of this uh, is, is really fresh, and some of it is being developed in the process of time. And so we have, we've been, been not only developing or have developed a Christian ministry major that's already been approved, but we're having conversations uh, with other departments, with other, school, with other schools on campus, with other faculty members, and we're asking, so how can students remain in your school, uh, remain in the major that they're, they're doing, and how can we be of help to them? How can we help deliver training to them? How can we help deliver equipping to them? Uh, maybe it's in the form of a minor. What would that need to look like? Maybe it's in, in the form of, of, of some kind of certificate. Maybe it's in the form of some kind of concentration or something of that nature. And so we're having these conversations. And I, I've been very encouraged to hear across disciplines and other fields of, of other members, even some here in this room of other departments, saying, you know, we want, we want our students to go out in this field, in that field, in this field, to be able to, to use their, their talents, their abilities, their passions, their gifts, the major that, that the Lord has led them to. And at the same time, we want them to have this kingdom vision of the mission of God, and we want them to have some hands-on skills that they can take with them wherever He may, wherever he may call them. Uh, and so, so pray for us in that endeavor. It's, it's an exciting, exciting time. So let me do this. Let, let me share uh, maybe some challenges for us, and then we'll, we'll take, do some Q&A before we wrap up this, uh, this afternoon. So let, let, me, let me talk for just a second uh, to, uh, to any Samford undergrads that may be, be here in the room. And one of the, th one of the things I want you to know is uh, if, if you're not in the Christian ministry program, I'm not trying to, to recruit you. This is, this, is not, uh, yeah, this is not come get your uh, Subway sandwich, you know, timeshare kind of thing, high pressure thing, you know, Dr. Parr's going to be at the back of the door, you don't get out until you sign your name. It's not, or not do, I'm not doing that. But I want to challenge you, regardless of where you are, whether you're, you're undeclared, you're three years in, four years in, you're just starting out, your majors are this, that, and the other. Um, I want you to, to understand that in light of being students at this university, um, here's a question for you. What will you do now? What will you do now at this moment in history, in this moment in time, to best position you, to best position you, in the global marketplace? How will you best position yourself in that marketplace that exists around us? What are you doing now? 
to make that happen. And um, at the same time, how is the notion of glorifying God by making disciples of all nations wed to what you're doing to best position yourself at this moment in time in the global marketplace? So what's taking place? Another thing I would encourage you to think about as an undergrad, take advantage of the women and men on this campus who are here to shepherd you and help you in this journey to the field. Uh, this is something that I believe is so often overlooked with so many students. Uh, there are brothers and sisters on this campus that are just aching to help you in this journey. And they want to lock arms with you, and they want to be there for you, and they want to help walk with you. So take advantage of this incredible resource of people, the body of Christ that the Lord has placed on this university campus while you have them during this moment in time, because in all likelihood, you won't have this opportunity again. Now, you may go on to do advanced studies and other things, but in all likelihood, this is, this is it. And so, so be a wise steward, be a wise kingdom citizen with this moment that you have while you're here at Sanford University. Um, I would also say to you as, as undergrad students, be a student of global realities of lostness and ask this question, where and how can my marketable degree overlap with the greatest needs for disciple making in Birmingham, across North America, and throughout the world? regardless of your field, regardless of your major, where, where does that overlap with the greatest needs on planet Earth for just that very thing? And I would begin to encourage you and challenge you to, to take that to the Father and begin asking, Lord, what would you have me to do in light of this? Uh, you may, it may be okay. I know that the Lord, is, He's going to keep me here in Alabama. He's going to take me to the great metropolitan area of Op. And I'm going to move to Op, Alabama. There's nothing wrong with my Op, Alabama. I grew up in a town of 7,000. I think that's probably, what, 12 times bigger than Op. But anyhow, it's another story. Um, I grew up in Kentucky. But um, um, wherever, wherever he places you, are you asking that question as a wise kingdom citizen? You've given me this ability to be in the marketplace. Where's the greatest needs? Where you place me? Where do those overlap for disciple making? No, let me, let me talk to the Beeson students. Let me... Talk to Beeson students, um, faculty, staff, other members of the university community. I'm just going to lump all of us together. Um, and, and that is, you're, you're not an undergraduate. Many of you in this room uh, have positions of leadership in local churches. Many of you are serving on staff. Some of you are elders, some of you are pastors. You're, you're getting ready to be, Lord willing, in such positions of leadership. And, and I want to, I want to ask you some things to think about and draw out some points for, for, for all of us as well. And that is, do you, see, do you see the incredible opportunity of being able to shepherd your students, your students to the field? That's an incredible opportunity. Most churches, that's not on their radar screen. Most believers, that's not on their radar screen. Um, I, we don't have time for a survey, but growing up, I mentioned I grew up in a small town in, in southeastern Kentucky. I remember when, when the Lord was, was, was stirring in my heart and calling me into vocational ministry, and I ran from that. I, I did not want to go in that direction, and then I, I realized that if Jesus is Lord, I cannot say no. And if I keep going in this direction, one day I may wake up in the belly of a big fish. And so when I repented of my sin and said, yes, Lord, wherever... Uh, I began doing the natural thing that you all did as well, and that is you begin to ask questions, and you begin to say, where can I find resources, and who can help me? And I remember I had some great, great pastors growing up, but they, and, and they had been through a similar experience, but they didn't know what in the world to do with me. Now, let's stop and think about this for a second. I'm, I'm speaking to mostly church leaders here, I am, uh, just because of the nature of the audience here. And that is, if we value that high position of the Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 calling of pastor-teacher, okay, apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastor-teachers. So um, if we value that, that as a very high position of significance and leadership, and yet, uh, and yet I believe that many of our churches do very little to help those that are called into the, that direction, very little to help shepherd them to the field. How much less are we doing with the men and women that make up the other 99.9% .9 of our membership in our churches. And so we're saying to these high school students, well, do whatever your guidance counselor says. Uh, what's been your family tradition? Yeah, go study that. Uh, what are you interested in today? Yeah, that's what you should do. 
the, the decision of, of, of declaring a major, as you well know, is, is one of the most life-changing decisions you'll ever make. It will set the trajectory of your life for many years to come. It is a huge kingdom stewardship to make this a very wise decision and a very important part of our ministries to shepherd people to the field. And so I would begin to say, are, are you seeing the opportunities for the students that you work with in church leadership roles and faculty on this campus in your departments, are you seeing the opportunities, even though they're already here, they're still, most, of, most of them are not where they're eventually wanting to be, are we seeing those opportunities to help shepherd them to the marketplace, shepherd them to, to the field? And so I would say, particularly for those of you that are, that are within local churches, I would say long before graduation day and they leave high school, think about how can you lay that foundation, give your students the whole counsel of God, teach them a biblical worldview, and teach them how to apply the Word. Can you, can you do that long before graduation day? Can you also develop within them, teach them, equip them, disciple-making skills? And for many of them, church planting skills, though not all will be involved in that ministry, but definitely disciple-making skills. And then at the same time, are you willing to see that a, that a significant portion of your ministry, in addition to rightly dividing the word of truth, could very much be counseling students into the marketplace? Let me think about it. Why, why would we ever want to leave such a great decision for kingdom advancement and, and seeing the mission of God being carried out? Why would we ever want to leave that up to secular guidance counselors? I mean, why would we want to leave such a major decision that has eternal ramifications? Why would we want to leave that up to uh, just the whims of youth or family tradition? I mean, how much do we encourage them to bring, bring God into that conversation? And, and if we don't ever talk about it, and we talk about it very little with those that say, I'm called to vocational ministry. You know, how much more so can we do with, with, with others that are not in the, the, the Christian ministry major, so to speak, or going on to seminary and things of that nature? So I want to I leave us with that. And uh, maybe we'll spend a few moments maybe talking, doing some Q&A and things of that nature. But, um, but very excited, very excited about, about what the Lord has been doing here in the, having a, a small part to play in this opportunity to be able to work with, with men and women that are going in the more full-time directional route through our major, but then at the same time being able to reach out and touch base with, with other men and women that are uh, desiring to, to think about the mission of God in the marketplace through their vocational skill sets that they obtain uh, through other degrees. And so, uh, Dr. Parks, maybe, do you want me to turn it back over to you or... What do you want to do, do, do the roving microphone if people's got questions? How do you want to do this? That's, that sounds great. All right. Well, we've got a few minutes for Q&A. I've got a class at 1 o'clock. I know the schedule says we're done at 1.05. My students won't start without me, but just to give you a heads up on it, I'm watching the clock. So. Thank you. Um, you talked a little bit about unreached people groups in the U.S., and I wanted to know how we can, as students living in Birmingham, how we can become more aware of these people groups, and I mean, I know there's organizations like Joshua Project, but how can we become actively involved in more than just prayer, but if there's so many unreached people groups, what, what can we do to help this? So, so at, this, at this moment in time, there is something like the Joshua Project that's out there. And I say like the Joshua Project because it's, it's, it's not connected with Joshua, but it's, it's similar. Um, it's called peoplegroups.info. And uh, if you go there, you can find out uh, data that's, at this point in time, it's about four years old on Birmingham, of groups that have been identified in the Birmingham area and locations and things of that nature. So, that, so you have that, that kind of resource. The, the other resource is that there are so many churches in the area that are doing some outstanding things uh, with um, unreached people groups that are here in the city. And Dr. Parks will be able to put you in contact with many of those that have already got some excellent things going on. But check out peoplegroups.info as well. Something I'd already heard about, but David Garrison recommended in the spring. We're going to uh, sign up for the Mapping Center uh, soon, and that will have a lot of um, information. And so uh, we will, what we would be able to do is to give you um, localized information on certain areas of town and kind of who's there. It's um, updated more often than I thought. They said it's updated every six weeks. Oh, great. Very good. Mm -hmm. That's encouraging. Um, this is a question about the the 
ministry, what is it called? The Christian ministry? Christian ministry program. Christian okay. ministry major. Major. Okay, the major. Yeah. So I guess why why now? Why is Sanford doing this and putting this program out now? Um, I, I think that it's, well, I don't think, I know. It's been a long time coming. The conversations that, uh, that I've been privy to uh, have been conversations that said this goes back a long time in the process. And People have been desiring it, talk, desiring for something like this to happen, talking about it, things of that nature. And so it's just been a long time coming. Uh, the other thing is, is the des- a desire to have something that, that has a, a heavy practical bent toward it. And so um, something that would, would be more hands-on in training and equipping. Um, that's all that I know at this point in time. Dr. Scott Guffin would be the person to know, and actually Dr. Blackwell down here, he's been involved in this process. and had a heart to see this happen a long time ago when I was like two years old. <laughs> Just kidding. Just, he's not that old. He's not that old. Good question, though. Anything else? Anyone else? Sorry. Is there a field experience um, qualification for the major? Uh, th- there is. So there, there, in addition to just in-class activities, it's a part of earning that three hour of credit in addition to tests and papers and lectures and things of that nature. There's some practical ministry components to it. There, there is also that, for lack of a better term, I'll say, you know, field-based training experience that you can get, earn credit for as well. And we're, we're in the process of talking through uh, with different uh, potential partners, both here in town and other parts of, of the United States and throughout the world, of how, how, can, we, how can we connect uh, students to get hands-on experience uh, with some of these resources that are already out there and are already doing amazing work in the kingdom. Got another one. You mentioned conversations with people who teach in other disciplines, and those. And you said that those have gone pretty well. Do you have any more details about what that would look like, about people pursuing different majors and being involved, you said, like a minor or an emphasis or something like that? At, at this point in time, the, the only official major that we have is, is just the Christian ministry major. We've, we're talking to those that are in other departments, and so therefore, what do those conversations look like? Well they've kind of been multifaceted. The idea of double major is a possibility, but you know, a lot of students don't, don't do that. But it's, it's an option. We're talking about minors. So like, for example, something that we talked about in a, in a treat that Dr. Blackwell and I were, were, were in with some of the other guys, about maybe having something that's, that's a missions minor. Uh, I came up with a great term, you know, cultural engagement you know, minor, something like to that effect, whereby some of these students in these other fields could get the training, the, 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 the biblical training, missiological training, hands-on training, and it wouldn't necessarily show up on uh, a, a record that would be overtly Christian and therefore could potentially cause them some issues in certain countries of the world. And so maybe something that doesn't have the name missions minor on it, but something uh, that would be more palatable to other parts of the world. So we're talking about that. We're talking about, okay, so can we deliver individual classes? Can we you know, is there a possibility of doing things that maybe concentration related the uh, ministry training institute because they do so much related to you know certificates uh we're asking questions about you know are things that we can do in you know in relation to maybe something certificate related so there are a lot of questions up in the air uh which to me that's exciting because the wheels are turning and so we'll see how things go in the days to come but i appreciate you asking that question that's good is there a reason it's in the school of arts as opposed to Yeah, I think he wants to get that on the recording. Sorry, I heard you perfectly, but the the the, peop- the audience that's playing at home, you know, they didn't get a chance to hear. Um, so I'm just curious how this ended up in the School of Arts uh, within the university in that specific college as opposed to a different college. Yeah, I I, I think that there there are a few factors involved in that. Um, one, there was also there were, excuse me there there was already a worship um, component to what the School of the Arts w- was already doing. And so that practicality was already sort of in place. Uh, the other thing is that Dr. Hopkins uh, had an incredible vision for this, an incredible heart to see this happen, uh, and has just been a huge champion, you know, from, for for a while now. And so the the emphasis on the on the hands-on, the practical, 
connects well with the, with the School of the Arts and with the School of the Arts already having something related to worship leadership, worship ministry, it just, it just kind of connected there. Now, I thought I was going to come to, uh, to uh, um, Sanford and in my office, you know, I'd be sitting here, there'd be my office, there's the missiologist sitting here, and then the office next to me is a bassoon player. You know, uh, it, it didn't happen, but, uh, but you know, I, dr- I dreamt that that would be a, kind of a cool thing, you know. So, how, how are your reads doing today? Yeah, how, how's your textbook on, you know, Mission of God? Uh, so, you know, but no, I, it, it's, re- it's, been, it's been a really, really good connecting point. Uh, now, Dr. Guffin came on board a year ago. And so, so he, he's already been with the faculty. They've, you know, connected, you know, well. So it's, it's, been, it's been a really warm reception. Well, okay. Um, Thank you. Renee Pitts has been leading a program called the Global Mission Scholars Program. She and Brian have been shepherding students to the field for a while, informally so. And so I'd like to ask Renee, please um, it, close us in prayer. Good Father, we thank you so much for your provisions for us through this meal and for nourishing us today through new ideas and for inspiring us through the creativity of our brothers who have seen the vision for this program and put in many, many hours of prayer and work to see it begin. So we want to ask for your provisions to continue as they enroll students in courses and enlist students as majors. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be very active among our student body, raising up students for the ministries that JD has been describing. We believe that this is your work, and it's work that only you can accomplish. So we entrust these faculty members to you. We trust the resources that will be needed to grow the program to you. We entrust every word that will be spoken in these courses to you. And most of all, Father, we entrust the lives of the students that you are calling to your service in this world to you. We thank you that you are Lord over this university and that we can trust you for its future. And we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.